All right. So. Hello. Hello. We've already done our endpoint video. And now that yeah. means there's one last thing to do to commem commemorate 2023. And that's do our best and worst of the year. Yes. Here we um, are. Just like last year, we're going to do this pretty rapid fire. Um, but yeah. And unlike last year, this time I, I watched that movies for me to do a top 10 on each, on each one. Yes. Oh, no rankings this time. Nice. Yes. Yep. I did something right. So yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, you want to go now. right into yours? Yeah. Don't make fun of me now. Hmm. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll get into mine right now. Okay. Yeah, sure, why not? So Ernest's worst list. At number yeah, 10, we, we have... Yeah, Renfield. All right, so Renfield was, you know, a little disappointing watching it because I was expecting something more, something a lot more bombastic, something more bizarre and strange and balls to the walls, but it was... It was pretty condensed for for what I was expecting, for what it looked... From, from what it seemed in the trailers. Um, not only that, it wasn't that funny. It was actually kind of lame in, the, in terms of humor. Like I appreciated the movie when when it uh when it did get to you know more bizarre sequences, <laughs> but the action sucked. <laughs> the action wasn't very good for the for the entirety of the movie. Gory, yes, it, it, it had some gore, some blood, some violence. Yeah, that was cool. Um, saving grace is uh here is Nicholas Holt, Nicholas Holt, and Nicholas Cage just uh chewing the scenery, being great. But other than that, it wasn't enough to, uh, you know, carry the movie. And I didn't, I didn't like it very much. No, no, sir. And now here it is, my <laughs> number ten. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And going in at your number nine is. Nine. Five Nights of Freddy's. Oh my god. Well, in the case of this one, I, I didn't know what to expect from a Five Nights of Freddy's movie. You know, other than back all the, all the way back back when in 2014 when the shit was announced. 2015. And then 15. There we go. Jeez. And I feel, I feel less old. Thank you. Hmm. But yeah, all the way back then when it was announced and like, oh wow, they're making, they're making a movie like that? Cool. I can't wait. And we waited. We sure did. We sure did wait, didn't we? D didn't we, Gabe? Mm-hmm. And now here we are. And it came out, and it wasn't very. It wasn't very good, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. It wasn't very good. Um, some redeeming qualities would be the animatronics, how good they look, and how much they look, how well they are adapted from the game. Like as you can see from this little poster right here, pretty accurate. If you played the games, you know what I'm talking about. Um, other than that, nah. It wasn't very scary. It, it barely tapped into the potential into the potential that uh, a Final Fantasy Freddy's movie would have. It barely didn't do much to innovate. Didn't yeah, didn't really do anything to be anything. Boring kills, boring scares, boring characters, and some dumb, some dumb, <laughs> a really dumb plot to say the least. Not very good, but I didn't hate it. That's that's the best thing I, I can personally say about it. I didn't hate it. Hmm. Moving on. All right. At your number eight, number we're eight. going to have Belch. Barbie. Oh, well, yeah, Barbie. You know, I was looking forward to Barbie. Honestly, I was. I thought it was. I thought it would be a, a fun little little movie. Just. It's fun, a little boss to the walls, some some nonsense, goofy movie, and charming movie too. That was gonna have some little message and then go off into the sunset, and then yeah, everybody will be happy. But no, Barbie was, it was, it was an oddly cynical movie that you know had a very strong message that it delivered in a very odd way, with bad comedy, lame characters. Lame plot, dumb, dumb characters also, except Ken. He was great, uh, and that John Cena cameo was a banger. Um, 
I like the acting. Margot, Margot Robbie and over here Ryan Gosling are the goats. But other than that, nah. Barbie was not it for me. I did not, I did not enjoy it. Maybe the can off thing uh, when they were when they were singing. That was nice. That was fun. <laughs> that was no. That was not the whole movie though. So no. Bye bye. All right. Thank you for thank you for Oppenheimer though. Oppenheimer. Okay. Moving and, on. All right. At your number seven, we have. John Wick 4, what a fucking clown movie, honestly. <laughs> I think the reason why I put this so high above something like Barbie is because of the critical reception this movie has. What <laughs> people are calling it, you know, a masterpiece, and I'm like, hmm? Really? Okay. <laughs> what can I say about John Wick 4? Okay. Um, the action is not good. I don't think the action is very good. I think a lot of it relies on, on the enemies not, wanting, not killing John Wick when they could. You know, they're, wa they're walking up, they're running up to him, but when they have guns, like, oh, oh, I got you, John Wick, I even don't have a gun. I'm gonna hit you with my gun instead of shooting you with my gun. <laughs> a lot of the action sequences re rely around enemies coming in waves like a fucking video game, and they're like, why aren't you there in the first place? What the fuck? What is this? Uh, and John Wick's plot armor. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't think anyone has thicker plot armor than John Wick. I add it with the with the bulletproof suit that he has. He, he's jumping off rooftops, getting thrown off of uh, of balconies, getting shot at, getting getting hit with shotguns on his bulletproof thing. That which was still fucking her, by the way. You're not invincible because you have a bulletproof suit. Doesn't make any sense. Fucking uh, infinite uh, infinite ammo. Enemies not hitting him, and the fucking stairway sequence is <laughs> so silly. Uh, and it's a, it's a silly plot with silly rules, with a silly, silly world and silly characters, and what can I say? I didn't think it was very good. Down before, blows. Clown movie. Next up, Gabe. Alright. At six, we have... Transformers Rise of the Beast. Oh, boy. Oh boy, oh boy. So, I have like a personal like issue with this movie because me being a Transformers fan, I was expecting something more than what we've gotten after after you know nearly a decade of Michael Bay's <laughs> movies. Dare I say, I would expect you know the fu the future Transformers filmmakers to learn from their mistakes. Bumblebee being a fine example of that, where we're taking. You know, Transformers and doing something different with it. That's not the Bayisms. Rise of the Beast is Michael Bay without Michael Bay, and it doesn't land. Doesn't have doesn't have that charm, that uh, that excitement that I get from watching those movies. Because I, I like those movies. I like the Bayformers movies. <laughs> no, not five though, or four. Mm. But Rise of the Beast is like, all right, if you're gonna be that. <laughs> and what do we learn? Nothing. It and it's barely itself. Trying to the fact that it's trying to be like scratch that. More of the fact that Rise of the Beast is like it couldn't even be its own thing. But with that, it's lame to say the least. This is the second movie with uh, in this new universe after Bumblebee. And the problem with it is that it's trying to do way too much for a second movie. Even though if it's 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 the second movie, it feels like the first because it's it is introducing you know the Autobots in totality to Earth. It's introducing like uh, I guess the human characters, but this movie does Unicrons, the Vegacons, it GI Joe, bro. Not even Megatron doesn't show up, and they're like, okay, slow down a minute. This is only your second movie. Please slow down. <laughs> but no, it, it tries to do too much, and it it over it over blows away too far too far too much. Not only that, the Autobots are kind of lame again. Optimus is 
not Optimus in this movie. He's he's kind of he's kind of weird in this movie. He does cool things, pops some cool lines, but he's so not himself, and I don't think the movie even earned it or even got itself out of that. And I don't know what else. Uh, it's called Rise of the Beast. You might as well call it false advertisement because they're barely in the fucking movie, like at all. And yeah, no, I don't like it. I came out of it thinking the first movie was. I came out of, uh, of it thinking Transformers One from 2007 from Michael Bay was better. And this it really is. This is a step back, <laughs> and I can't. <laughs> and they're doing GI Joe next. <laughs> that's funny. Tell me, Gabe, has there been a good GI Joe movie? No. No. Uh, yeah, that's true. No, there has not been, and they're making, and they're making, <laughs> they're trying to do their crossover with Transformers. <laughs> Ain't that funny? They sure are gonna try. They really are gonna try. Can't wait for the My Little Pony crossover afterwards. <laughs> Next. All right. At number five, we have the creator. Oh my god, this movie! This movie looks so good in the trailers. What movie was it that you saw the trailer from? When we when um. In the theater, what movie did you uh, go to watch when you saw this trailer? When I saw this trailer? Yeah. Uh, Oppenheimer. I think I might have an Oppenheimer for me, too. I think so. I don't know. Oh, Maybe. Oppenheimer and Asteroid City. No, 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 no. Yeah, it was Asteroid City. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Since Asteroid City, and that was that was what? That was when? Um, June. June? Yeah, it was June. So since it's June... I was looking forward to this movie. It looked it looked really good. Look looked nice. Something something new from um Gareth Edwards. And I'm like, alright. This was pretty cool. I can't wait to see it. And then I saw it. It wasn't very good. <laughs> yes. You know, I'll leave it short. Because I'm I I feel like it's gonna be in your list too. Just a little just uh just a feeling. Yeah. So it's got nothing to say. Not interesting. It looks it looks nice and all, but it's it's just tame. It's almost it's kind of like Avatar two, where it looks really nice, but it has it <laughs> doesn't do anything interesting. Has nothing to say, and it's boring. It's boring as all hell. Thank God it wasn't longer, because I would have died in the theater. <laughs> yeah, movie blows. Movie blows hard. Next up. All right. At your number four. My number four. What? What? My? Oh, what could it be? Namona. Oh boy. See, I I would have like a much longer rant for like the the next top th the next three movies and, and this one. <laughs> but I had them all in the uh in the the endpoint section. So <laughs> I'll leave like this. Namona, the character, is a hypocrite. A lame fucking hypocrite who has no perspective and understanding on why people think that she is the way she is, and she doesn't make it any better for herself. And that is and that is the whole movie. And I think it sucks. That is all. That is all. Okay. It blows. It sucks. Overrated. Okay. Well, at your number three, okay. we have. The Exorcist Believer. Oh man, this is uh, one of those movies that I think, hey, we should stop making horror movies because we, we uh, are not doing a good job with them. And yeah, Exorcist Believer is a really bad horror movie. A really bad horror movie to a what I hear to be a perfect um, movie from way back then that I haven't seen. I want to see it, so then after I see it, I can be mad at this movie even more. This is a direct sequel, right? I believe that's what, so. That's what they said. Yeah, that's what they said. This, this isn't a um, a Halloween case where the ones that came after the first one <laughs> aren't canon or whatever the fuck that was. This is a sequel sequel. Oh, it, it, I guess technically it's like Halloween, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it sucks, man. This movie sucks. It's boring as all hell. It's not scary. Except for like one little part that I mentioned in the end point. But 
it's not enough. If you, like, for like two hours, I think the movie is, for two hours, it's just really boring, really lame, really dumb, nothing makes sense. Just goes on. This is purposeless. Doesn't find this footing at all. And I, I was just, I was just out of it. I, I was kind of just laughing along, laughing with the movie at, the, at that point because I had to make, I had to entertain myself in the theater somehow, right? And yeah, this is his believer is really bad. Would not, would not recommend. Hmm. Next. All right. Next and number, number two, two is the Flash. You know what? I'll say, I'm surprised this movie isn't number one. I, I thought since the first time I saw it, I'd be like, oh man, nothing, nothing's beating this. Oh boy, was I wrong. But yeah, The Flash. The Flash is a, is like one of those clown movies. Those, uh, those dog water movies that you, that just comes out like once in a lifetime and you think, wow, they made this. The studio saw this. They spoke to the people who made this and they said you know what this is okay we should we should we should release this in theaters and people will love it and so i guess people did tom cruise loved it james gunn said it was this is the best superhero of the movie of the year something like that and i'm there like oh really and they were lying to me because after i saw it i was left there thinking wow i hate everything i hate cinema i hope they never make movies ever again because of this <laughs> thankfully there's there, there's some good that can come out of uh, all of this mahogany, but yeah, I will I would point to my rant where uh, I uh, I went off in this movie, but let's just put it lightly. It's dumb. It's world breaking. <laughs> the Flash is an annoying character. Batman is weird. Supergirl is wasted, but even. Yeah, Supergirl is kind of wasted in this movie. The final, the final act. It's a horrible nightmare that makes you th think the first two parts of the movie are, you know, decent. They aren't, but in com by, you know, by comparison, you think, wow, okay. And yeah, I'm glad that <laughs> if something good can come out of this, is that we never, we never do something like this ever again. But the director of this movie is making the is making the brave and the bold. So they're like, hmm, okay. In two years, we'll see the same thing, probably. I hope not. I really hope not. But I did, you know, back then I, I didn't hope for this for this either. Oh, and let's not forget, this is a this is a adaptation of the Flashpoint paradox. That little story out there. Now that's a good movie. Am I right, Gabe? That's a good movie, right? Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good movie. Yeah, this is not. This is not. This is not bad. This is a. Uh, this is like its ugly twin brother. Yeah, that's all I have to say about the Flash. It's a shitty movie. It's like <laughs> really bad. But you know what? It's not the worst thing I saw this year. Somehow. Right. And that brings me to my number one pick. Huh? Rebel Moon Part One. Child of Fire. You know what? I think that if the Snyder Cut came out, I would be like, hey, you know what? I underestimated you, Snyder. I didn't know your game like that. I put in no seriousness. Fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. But one of the best things about this movie is that it's making people, you know, a lot of people seem to be waking up to the, the Zack Snyder just love vacation that they've been having for the past four years with, with that guy i never understood i never did but but somehow as things went by people went oh no Zack Snyder, he's, a, he's a genius man he makes really good movies uh bvs is a masterpiece uh Snyder cut is a masterpiece men of steel is a masterpiece i'm like oh okay okay i see i see what about this though no no, this is this is this is not it. This is a uh, this is a uh, this is a certification for pe for people like oh no he sucks <laughs> he does suck <laughs> this movie is uh 
God, what even happens in this movie that makes any sense? Who are these people? These people on the screen, who who are they? Gabe, name name one of them. Not one that is a nemesis, because her name is funny. Cora. What what is she about? Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know either. And the movie doesn't know either. Yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> like, if I can say what puts this above, like, what makes this worse than The Flash, I guess it would have to be the fact that at least The Flash had a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think The Flash made more sense. Ew. can't believe I said that. But yeah, this is a nothing movie. It's miserable. It's just boring us all hell. Nothing interesting happens. The f the action isn't very good. The movie the movie is really ugly. <laughs> like interestingly enough, I hear that Zach was the cinematographer for this one and Army of the Dead. Those are her worst looking movies. People say his vision is like, oh, he's, he has such a great vision. So I'm guessing the case is that his best movies are are done by some other people who are good at their job with his input. So it's like, I guess he's got a, a good vision in the mind that people can <laughs> adapt to <laughs> to the camera. But he can't do it himself because look at this movie is <laughs> really bad to look at. At least, you know, oh, at least, at least the Flash looks good. At least I can see the flash. It doesn't look very pretty. But at least it looks like I can see something. <laughs> um, and what else? The acting isn't very good either. Yeah, no. Everyone, everyone's asleep in this movie. I don't know, man. What else? It's it's really bad. <laughs> it's really really bad. I think I think that does it. All right. I, think I'm, I don't think I have much to say. We had, we had a a very deep conversation about it uh, two night two nights ago with our yeah. endpoint. Go check that out, guys. Yeah. Check that out. All right, and with that, I guess that concludes your worst list. That, that, that concludes my worst list. God damn, that is. Uh, there there were some stinkers this year. I tell you what. Yeah. Well, I guess it's my turn. Yes. It is now time for my worst list, and like last year, I'm going to start with my dishonorable mentions. These are movies that are not very good, and just barely missed the cut. Barely. They were right. that shit, but they were shit. Not that shit, yeah. you know? Alright. At number five for dishonorable mentions is Fast X. Ooh. Yeah, this was in the list for a while. But it got lucky. <laughs> it got lucky. But what else can I say? It's a Fast and Furious movie. And hey, don't say that with back conditions. Pun in fully intended. This franchise is running out of fumes. It's it's gone. It, it's gone. It's done. It's over. It's, it's over. over. It's it's unequivocally over. If it wasn't over for this franchise after F nine. It's done now. There's just we think about it. You know what? I didn't even see it. <laughs> I was so just and I didn't see it. Yeah. That says, that says something about me. I'm the biggest fast and furious fan ever. Yeah. Yeah. My ass sure will be seated right. for that next one though. Uh maybe I'll be there. Maybe I'll be there next time. Yeah. yeah completely out of context, died. yeah. I'll just see how it dies. This is how it happened. This is this is how fast and furious died. Yep. But yeah, Fast X is, it's a movie that I saw in 2023. It's kind of just everything wrong. Well, we'll see films in this list that are a bigger epitome of everything wrong with modern blockbuster filmmaking. But Fast X yeah. is a good pointer. All right. And at number four on my dishonorable mentions is Resident Evil Death Island. Hey, you know what, Gabe? I'm gonna interrupt you there. I, I, just because I can't, I can't quite go, let go of the fact that I forgot about it because I did forget. I know I forgot about something. Ant-Man 3. 
I forgot about Ant Man. I was I was gonna ask you when you sent me your list if you forgot about Quantumania, but I forget about Quantumania. Yeah, that's so ashamed. Quantumania is number three on my list, by the way, guys. That movie's hmm. so fucking bad. I hate that movie. That's it. Carry on. All right. <laughs> I'm sure but, we'll see uh, you on your list. Resident Evil Death Island is pretty bad. It's pretty bad, but but it is enjoyable and that's not the sole reason it stayed out of the list the sole reason it stayed out of the list is because there were 17 other movies i thought were worse so yeah, i love this movie guys so uh, yeah it's pretty great <laughs> you're, you're much wondering hey how come he says he loves this movie but doesn't like john wick 4 because this movie's self-aware it's not pretending to be anything grander other than a silly Resident Evil movie with uh, these characters you like from, from the games. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, no, I, I don't really think this movie is very good, but it managed to skirt the list somehow. At number three for our dishonorable mentions is The Creator. Number three? Wow. Yep, this, uh, this managed to, to sneak out of the list. Much to my dismay, but... Reading heavily. Oh, thank God. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, this movie sucked. It's boring and dull as sin, and as Ernest said, it has nothing interesting to say or do. It's just two hours and 15 minutes of nothing. That long? Jeez. Yeah, sure felt way longer. It really did. Yeah. I was willing to give it props for being an original film but even then it's got it doesn't have an original bone in its body yeah i was gonna say you don't get props for being original but not doing anything with it no and i'm doing a good job with it either yeah the creator is shit uh, number better. two for my dishonorable mentions is the blackening now yes. I did have a small little rant about this movie in the end point, and that's because I think this film is one of the biggest cases in 2023 of missed opportunity. This is something that could have been and should have been a lot better than it was. It really should have been pretty funny, and instead it was just the bare minimum. Do you, do you think that like, it like feels easy to make this movie something that, you know, what it could have been? It really could have been something better. Like... I say this not having really seen any scary movie movies, but I'm sure a scary movie does what this movie's trying to do, but better. Hmm? Be just a parody. Yeah. And criticize, like, the tropes and stuff, but... I just couldn't. I mean, to that, I, I couldn't really... Just watch the movie. Yeah. I, I could not... I could not stand this movie. I thought it was... Just... Ugh. But yeah, enough about that. And the final dishonorable mention before we get into the worst list is Sharper. All right. This one. Yeah. Uh, another this another case of dull and boring as sin. Except this one gets the added bonus of being hard to follow. Look at that guy! Wow. Yeah. What a waste. But yeah. Take an interesting premise and tell it in the most uninteresting way possible, and you get sharper. Also, you get, as long as you stay convoluted, you have the air of being smart, which is not true at all. Actually, is that a for the movie or something? <laughs> no, that's me making shit up, because this movie pretends that it's smart by overloading you with information and telling it in a weird way, so that it makes you think... That it's being smart but instead it's just incredibly basic and has nothing to say so it just tries to tell it differently right and hence you get sharper well yeah with that we can now get into my worst top 15 worst Eight films worst. Oh, oh my god he's uh he's has some shit then wow off the uh off the year at number 15, we have Operation Fortune Ruse de Guerre. Uh, 
That was like the first movie you saw that uh, last year, right? No, that was actually the first movie I saw last year was House Party. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Operation Fortune uh, is just Guy Ritchie fully asleep at the wheel. <laughs> and instead of creating something fun and engaging, he created something that I almost forgot about entirely. I had to remind myself this movie existed. Yeah, until you had to make this list. Yeah. Hugh Grant can't save you forever, Guy Ritchie. Neither can Jason Statham either. You can't rely on them to those two forever. Because I uh, have a sneaking suspicion that... Um, what's his name? Uh, David Ayer is going to learn that lesson very soon with the beekeeper. The beekeeper? You think yeah. that movie's going to be bad? Oh, I Yeah. <laughs> if that movie's not bad, then it'll be like a miracle. Yeah. But yeah, Operation Fortune. Honestly, when I saw the when I saw the Bikipur trailer, I thought, is this a new Guy Ritchie movie? But <laughs> no, it's David Ayer. David Ayer. And that just should tell you right now how low Guy Ritchie has both risen and soared and fell. Jesus. He seems uh, to be going up now with uh, his movies like lately. Yeah. Yeah, Operation Fortune is just uh, a nothing burger. Yeah. This yeah. is the down, by the way. Yeah. All right. And at number 14, we have The Marsh King's Daughter. Yeah, there has been a there was a trend this year, or this past year, I should say, of hour and 40-minute movies that are incredibly boring and slowly paced and pretend to be something they're not, which in this case is a uh, tense character thriller it's not even close to that it's actually just incredibly boring and has nothing to really do no character is interesting nobody's even giving a fully committed performance except for maybe daisy ridley and ben mendelson the directing is awkward the editing is awkward it ends horribly too like it ends really unsatisfying what yeah. Is movie? What is the movie about? Yeah. Uh, so Ben Mendelsohn uh, kidnapped a lady and then had a kid with her and then forced that kid and the, that lady to live in the woods until suddenly uh, they ran away and then 20 years later go by and suddenly the dad uh, gets br gets broken out of jail that's the plot. Wow. And then he starts having horror movie slasher scares. Can't believe you hated it. This movie sucks. I like it. <laughs> I, that's why. That's yeah. why it's here. That's why it's here. See, see you in the Ray movie, Daisy. Yeah. Can we? I can't wait to put you in my bat in my worst list. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, moving on from that, at number 13, we have The Marvels. Oh my god. Yeah, uh... What is there to say? I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, what is there to say? What could you even say, bro? What is there yeah. to say, man? Like, it's an absolute mess of a movie. It's incomprehensible. It's jumbled to shit. Mangled as all hell. This is studio interference to the movie. It's, I doubt that this movie was anything that anybody who was involved with it signed on to make. The reason why it doesn't go above the next movie I'm going to talk about is because of Iman Vellani as Kamala Khan. That is the one thing keeping it in spot 13. Yeah, she's because, very dedicated. because spot 12 is The Flash. Now, yeah, that was number two, by the way, guys. So imagine. Now, I liked The Flash even after seeing it four times. I couldn't. I could never. Now, why I like it? Probably because it's a steep. Probably because it's an absolute fucking piece of shit. To that, it gives me a little bit of charm, and I do enjoy parts about it. That being said. It's not a good movie at all. In fact, it's probably one of the most disasterful comic book movies to come out of the past, like, five, ten years. 
Yes. And that is saying something when we've had some some absolute dumpster fires. But yeah, the flash is what we're, what really is there else to say? I've talked about this movie a bunch on this channel in the past six 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 seven months. I, I've really run out of things to say about it. You've gone through an arc with this movie, I'll say. Yeah. I still enjoy it though. But it deserves its spot on the list. Are you going to watch it a fifth time, you maniac? Uh, not in the next year. Oh man, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long distance between me watching this for f a fifth time. But yeah, uh, moving on to spot eleven. Let's just keep the DC train going with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. Rest in peace, the DC. Rest in piss, the DCEU. You will not be missed. Not be missed. Hey. Uh, Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom is has none of the charm of its predecessor, and because of that, is immediately worse for it. Again, Aquaman is a pretty bad movie. One that I enjoy because it's got its charms, partly in due to how bad it is. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom doesn't have any of that. It just exists and is the exact kind of comic book film you would have seen in 2005. If if that if that paints a picture to you at all. So this is a Daredevil and, and this is this is Daredevil in 2023. This is Electra in 2023. Maybe not that far. But it's 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 given it's it's Hulk it's hulking it up. But yeah, Aquaman Wait, Lost Kingdom. Like trust worse than Daredevil? I'm probably yes, but that. <laughs> yeah, I, I would probably say so. I mean, I haven't seen either in a long time, so yeah, it's been a minute. I guess I'll have to watch those for before Daredevil. I remember, 3. <laughs> I remember Daredevil more. So yes, I do remember Daredevil more. But yeah, uh, Aquaman Lost Kingdom sucks. I don't really know what else to say. It's. It's got nothing going for it, really, okay. at all. That takes us into spot 10. This is where we start getting into the real stinkers. The real stinkers. Real. Indiana that's, Jones that's, and the that's, Dial that's of Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Go on, Gabe. Let it all out. What do you take... Yeah, what do you what do you is. get when you take a legendary franchise you put it in the hands of someone competent and talented but you have no idea what to do that's when you get indiana jones and the dial of destiny it's a two and a half hour insufferable piece of shit that aims to just not even bore, but just actively like insult you the entire way through. It doesn't, it, it does very little right. And it's a film that I soured on. It, it, could, it should say something. That I, when I went to watch this again, I had to turn it off. It was pissing me off. Wait, wait, hold on. You said it insults you? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It, it pissed me off so much watching it a second time that I had to shut it off. I had to shut it off. My yeah. goodness. I, I, had to, I had to turn this movie off. It was... It is very, very bad. Ugh. Dial of, Dest oh, yes, my God. Dial, Dial of Destiny, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Number nine is... Oh, fuck yourself, Dial of Destiny. You oh, know what you did. look at that. Haunted Mansion. Hey, uh, take everything I just said about Indiana Jones, but just remove, like, the legacy franchise part. This is just a movie that just insults you the entire time because it thinks it doesn't it thinks you don't know what you want it thinks you're uh 
you, you don't want a a fun horror movie instead you want um a, an amalgamation of bits that nobody committed to a inconsistent tone editing style and acting you get the most like soulless corporate Halloween movie, but didn't even come out in Halloween, it came out in August. It's ugh. Haunted Mansion is a bore. And it's 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 like it's a baffling movie to watch because you watch it and it's like what was anybody thinking while making this? Like they they thought this would work. They yeah, they they they, ba- they bought into it. And you know what? I sure didn't. Hence why it earned its spot in number eight on this list. Yeah, that's why it's here. But you're later wondering, what did they accomplish? Nothing. Yeah. And you know what? We've been on this Disney train for a while. Let's keep it going with Ant-Man saying... and the Wasp Quantumania. Oh my god. Yeah. See, if I was making a list based on movies I hated, Quantumania would get the number one spot in this year, in 2022, and in 2021. Why is that, Gabe? Um... Because I am a resident Ant-Man enjoyer, and it feels like ever since Ant-Man and the Wasp, I feel like I've been dis- like I've been per I've been specifically tortured. They've been after you. They've been after me since Ant-Man and the Wasp, and they haven't let up. Did. They were like, "Hey, did you see this guy? Fuck this guy, especially." Fuck like, this guy. Oh, he liked he liked Ant-Man. You're fucking stupid. Let's fuck yeah, fuck this guy, right? We're gonna we're gonna show you how stupid Ant Man is. You know what? We're gonna put the next big bad of our entire franchise in the movie. Oh psych, he can't even be him anymore. Haha, <laughs> killed by ants. Yeah. Killed by ants. Hey, those ants are hardcore, they're socialists, right? I don't even give a shit. <laughs> Uh, if this wasn't the final death nail for Rick and Morty, I hope Rick and Morty dies in a fire and never gets returned. I hope that why? show burns. I hope it what? suffers. I hope Justin Roiland rots. Why, why did Rick, Justin Roiland had nothing to do with this movie, right? Yes, it did. Rick and Morty writers. No, but that, that wasn't Justin Roiland. That was uh, the other guy. Jeff Loveless. Right? Guess what? He's a Rick and Morty writer. No, I know he's a Rick and Morty writer, but Rick and Morty has nothing to do with this, all right? No, it does. It has everything to do with this. No. Fuck listen, this, listen, fuck listen, this listen. movie. Just, fuck, no, 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 no. And, fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. Fuck Brick and Morty. Fuck Look, this movie. Wanna, fuck this movie me, to oblivion. Don't make me defend Rick and Morty. Nah, nah, you're gonna have to defend Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty did nothing wrong. Rick and Morty did everything wrong. Oh, Number seven. That was the guy. And hey, be thankful that he's not writing Avengers whatever next one. I don't give a shit. Number seven. Five Nights at Freddy's. Ooh, ooh. You want to know why this ended up above Ant Man? Because you're a fan of Vanessa Freddy's. Mr. Shadow. No. No. Because I thought this was worse. No. Because at the very least, Ant Man had the. <sighs> the decency to be quick. Now, this movie is shorter. But it sure didn't feel that way, now, did it? I think this is better than Ant Man, but <laughs> yeah. Final Fantasy Freddy's though. is a com- entirely in- incompetent movie. Like, like there was maybe an idea when they went to write Ant Man. I don't know what their idea was when they went to Five Nights at Freddy's. I think they just said, uh, "Do we have a script? Yeah. Okay, fuck it. Make the movie. It's been seven years." Let's just do it. And do it they did. And it turned out to be this boring, uninteresting, and nonsense movie that even if you don't know the lore, it's impossible to follow. And even as someone who knows like some of the lore, it's still pretty hard to follow. Because the movie yeah. itself doesn't make a case. Like, if you look at the ending of the movie, that literally makes no fucking sense. It it has nothing. You're just watching it and you're like, I don't get this. I don't get how this happened. 
But it's okay, right? You just need to go watch like the 15 map pat videos and you'll understand everything. I don't have to, do, I shouldn't be made to do homework. Do you? Does this movie, movie makes you want to do homework? Does the movie encourage, but does it? I think so. Oh. Because if you look at that ending, how are you supposed to get it if you don't know the lore? I don't remember the ending. What happens again? Uh, Matthew Lillard gets confronted by the robots, he gets spring-locked, and then he gets put in the closet. Right. Because, uh, drawings, I guess. You know what, I think there's just, I, I think maybe they'll just leave that up to, um, to the movie. I, I think, if I'm thinking anything, I'm thinking they're, they're, they're going by their own little movie, movie rules that will be explained in the second movie. No, that's not at all what they're doing. Yeah. Do, do you think even considering they're directly referencing a scene that happens in the games that's not what's happening right they are expecting the audience to already know and that, are they well, or, or are they looking up to like no they they are they they did that so that the audience who knows will clap and can get excited right. and say holy shit they did the spring lock scene and if you have no idea what that is you are left there going, I don't know what the fuck I just saw. I mean, I mean in that case, as a, movie, as, a, as a person making the movie, couldn't they be like, hey, people who know, know, but people who don't know, know. And that can be like, that can like, leave like a mystery for them. Okay, that still sucks. Because you still watch the movie, you have no idea what happened. There, there's a lot of, I don't know, endings out of that. They're like, what happened? That's not particularly a bad thing. Again, I feel like when it comes to these movies, I don't think I, I don't think this is like a movie at all, by the way. But I think when it comes to at least this FNAF movie, and given the fact that they're making a second one, I think they're leaving room for again and some interpretation and then some unanswered questions for what might be a second movie. Because this is the mystery box, you see. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think it's like Halo Five, or it's like read the book to know so you can know what happened. Why? Why these characters are here? Or watch that that video. <laughs> Just let me drop to you. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Kate. This movie blows. <laughs> Number six. Pain hustlers. Eh. You're not Wolf of Wall Street. And you never Wolf will be Street. Wolf of Wall Street. You never you never go full Wolf of Wall Street, is that what you said? No, I said you're never gonna be Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, that's true. And as matter no matter how much you try, you're not gonna have the same energy or the same entertainment value. Not even if you make Chris Evans wear a a suit based off of a pharmaceutical drug and start rapping and then have him ball his eyes out in said costume that's how he's that's a that's a scene that's a quite that's what i seen in my head to put you know that's so funny <laughs> probably not no it's meant to be serious oh it's meant to be serious did you laugh no no were you were you sad no were you um, hooked by the scene? No, I wanted it to. No. I wanted to turn off the movie, but instead I finished it because there was ten minutes left. Oh, I get it. I get it. Movie opioids are bad. I'm get it. I I get it. People are scummy. I'm I'm get it. <laughs> this movie absolutely fucking blows and i i feel like i don't even have anything to say because it's just it i just don't even know man it's, it's not even a tough life you're going off you're going off you're popping off look at you yep at number five we have rebel moon part one the child oh of fire well every movie he puts out i find it harder to find a reason to defend Zack snyder <laughs> And with this one, I just go, you know what? Nah. Nah, you don't get to have this one. You're gonna get to rush this. 
you don't get this one um this movie is the hmm Rebel Moon is what happens when you build a world and expect the audience to be in your brain. You've you've built this campaign setting and you started your D&D session and you've got your friends together and you're like, "All right, here's this cool world I created." But then you don't explain anything about it. You just kind of drop them in. And instead of filling it with NPCs that they can talk to, uh, you're instead railroaded the entire time and just say, okay, uh, now uh, friend three, your character now walks in. Now uh, friend four, they're, they're going to you now. And instead of making them like do dice rolls to like try to convince the characters to join the party it's just no no no, it happens though but zach why uh because i'm the dm and i say so but zach who who, we don't know each other that's for you guys that's that's for you guys you're the party you figure it out you guys are just here now it's not we what's the motivation that's up to you to decide well okay you're the players all right we're we're the players yep this movie sucks it has it. no characterization. Like the world building is, it's trying to be there, but instead of explaining anything, they just drop you in and just say, "Here you go." There's this planet. Oh, so we're gonna expose it stuff. Yep. Except they don't even go through like the process of doing the expository dialogue. They just kind of just let it sit. It's like. It, that's like walking into Dune, but the, and they don't even once explain the Bene Gesserit. Uh, they're, they're more uh, dedicated to expositing uh, events instead of the world. Yeah. It's Just like, front or, front or it's region, like Snyder way. went, all right, I have this evil empire. Why are they an evil emp- empire? Okay, they were wronged. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, that's it? Okay, now they're just evil. Okay, cool, whatever. Part two is gonna gonna suck just as hard, if not worse. Hey, hey Snyder Cut's gonna fix everything. Number four. I have Murder Mystery Two. <laughs> oh my God. Unfunny Adam Sandler comedies, obligatory spot. Moving on, this, number this three. Be- Cobweb. Now, normally, well, maybe not normally, but I could be a douchebag and just say, not scary horror movie, moving on, but now I'll actually speak on this one. Uh, what do you get, like, when you have a boring horror movie that's not scary? Well, you get something mediocre, right? But what if you do that and take the most mind-numbingly dumb plot possible and pair it with the most idiotic characters possible who don't explain anything instead just act creepy and then uh when when we decide to talk about the creepy thing it's exactly what you thought it was what if but what if it was worse oh Cobweb. Cobweb. Anthony Starr yeah. can't save you this time. <laughs> yeah. Number two. We have Knights of the Zodiac. Oh my god. Well, it's here because because there's one other movie that I thought was that much worse. Sean Bean is in this movie. Sean Bean is in this movie. And you know what? You want to know why Knights of the Zodiac is up here? What's that? Oh, well, not just because there's one other movie I thought was worse, but because this movie is just... It's Dragon Ball Evolution reincarnate. Oh, so it's great. 
Shut up. <laughs> it is just as bad, just as unexplanatory. And I'm going to assume I am not a Saint Seiya knowledgeable person, but I would assume to any Saint Seiya fans that this is just as disrespectful to its original source as Dragon Ball Evolution was. I think you mean, I think you mean better. I love Dragon Ball Evolution. You're a bad person. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> <You're> like... <laughs> then I must be the worst person in the world. Truly, indeed. Oh my god, it says Zoro. That is Zoro, yes. Oh yeah, that is McKenyu. And that was my introduction to McKenyu. <laughs> like, oh, start. Oh, yeah. wait, I didn't even I didn't even realize it was him when I watched the Netflix One Piece. No, I kind of just put it together right now. But yeah, this movie is absolute horseshit. But you know what? It's not as bad as my number one worst movie of 2023, Ghosted. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Ugh. What's wrong with the gate? Tell us. <sighs> tell us, tell us. Oh, Early two thousands romantic comedy. Both of the stars are unlikable. Nor do they feel like they should be with each other at all. In fact, they would actually probably be way better millions of miles away from each other. Oh, what if uh, Chris Evans was a whiny fucking sack of shit? And what if Ana de Armas' character was just uh, a plank of wood? Did not see Knives Out? Ghosted is just a poor man's excuse of a comedy with even worse action. And a slew of cameos that are just a flip book of all of these actors that I know and could get to say yes to a five second cameo. But yeah, Ghosted is absolute horseshit. It's just not good, not funny. It's not even not like funny. charming. It's not charming either. No. No. It's not even like that. It's not even like entertainingly bad. It's just it's just obnoxious. And then it it's it's, it's it insists bad. it's funny. It insists upon itself. Yeah. Ugh. And that concludes my worst of list. And now we go oh, to your I... best list. Oh my god, my best right. list. All right, and at number Fire ten for you is the burial. Oh my god, this movie was a surprise to say the least. You know, I was just scrolling through Amazon, and being like, "Huh, man, what to watch? I need to watch movies because I'm I need to catch up. I need to watch some some more stuff. I I have been lacking my movie stuff this year. Oh, what's this? Jimmy Fox and Tommy Lee Jones? Okay." And I saw it, I was like, oh my god, this movie is really good. Yeah, it's a really, again, really good movie that talks about the legacy of history, of people, of families. And it's a fight against, you know, those greedy corporations that want to bury that, that legacy. So people that people don't know about and people will forget. It's great. What you're saying, it's funny. It's funny, charming, and my hearted. Honestly, man, I had a good time with the burial. Good job, movie. And it's a biopic. <laughs> uh, it's not, not a fucking biopic. Next up. All right. And you are number nine. My number nine. Dungeons oh. and wait a minute. That's Hold not up. Right. Wait a minute. That's not right. That's not right. Hold on. All right. Wrong My bad. Back. My bad, folks. I had it labeled as the right thing, but I, I it was the wrong, the wrong thing. 
Hey, that's the wrong, wrong movie. Yeah. That's the wrong Chris. Now, now here's, here's a different Chris. Extraction 2! Oh my god, what a surprise. So, a case with this movie. It's not that it's one of the best I've seen this year, or that it's even better than The Burial, which is number 10. It's just that this movie is just a really fucking good action movie. Like, legitimately. Like, once the action starts, it's just, it's just it doesn't stop. Particularly... A what? Almost 20 minute long sequence? A long shot sequence? No cuts? No noticeable cuts at least. Of... <laughs> fucking... Chris Hemsworth just kicking some serious ass. Taking those places, some crazy set pieces that... It's, it's just, you, you know, unique, hard hitting, and fun. This is a fun ass action movie that I would have loved to have seen in theaters. It's such a, it's such a spectacle that... I couldn't help but I couldn't help but just put it in the you know in my list. I love it. It's great. This movie's badass. Bad fucking ass. Next up, number eight. Let's go. Number eight. Evil Dead Rise. Ah, oh, this was a movie I was looking forward to, and boy, it fucking delivered. Like first off, this movie this movie doesn't give a shit. It will kill children. It will kill innocent people. Innocent bystanders in the most gruesome fucking ways possible. Oh, and it's, uh, mwah. It's beautiful, evil dead. Just. Just. It's just. It's that evil dead charm that it has. <laughs> it's. It's apparently scary too. Not not since, like, the first evil dead movie that was it that I think, huh, evil dead's kind of scary. I'm more so affiliated Evil Dead, from what I've seen, with uh, goofiness, campiness, and just like a lot of <laughs> a lot of hardcore violence. This movie is a really good mixture of both. It's got its horror aspect from like, you know, since for like the a majority of the movie, until it earns the over-the-top Evil Dead type action, blood spatter, chainsaw sawing, just action that's just like oh it's so satisfying this movie was a fucking treat loved it good shit probably the best horror movie i've seen all year <laughs> competition was not fast i'll tell you that next up number seven maestro Oh boy, this movie is really, really fucking great. So, Bradley Cooper it seems to be 2-0 so far, because he, he, you know, he, he started off with Star Wars Born all the way back in 2018. I love that movie. Maestro, while not as good, it's such a good fucking movie, guys. Like, there's a lot of similarities to, to it and a Star Wars Born. And a Star Wars Born. Some some pretty like noticeable similarities that I that I you know noticed while watching uh, the movie and thinking back to a Star Wars Born. I, I guess what I would say that admires for this very uniquely is uh the way it tackles the relationship between um you know the couple up up here in, on screen, the way it tackles it and just the way we see their love start fall start back up but but just end before they could be at their best this movie is it's a tragic movie it's heartbreaking and yeah, it's one of the best movies i've seen all year next up i'm rolling these out like dice number six spider-man across spider-verse oh my god this movie is fucking amazing guys mm. If there was a uh, more, more, for, if there was more so list that I, of my movies that I, that I like, liked the most, like really, really liked, liked in the door, and it's just based it purely off of that, then oh yeah, Spider Verse would be like probably top three. But I believe this movie is just a little worse than the first Into the Spider Verse. But for what it does really, really well, it has, it's got to be on the list, all right. Across the Spider Verse is a fucking treat as a Spider Man fan, as a comic book fan, as a, as a fan of animation overall. 
this is just ah one of the best movies all of all year and one of my favorite experiences for watching a movie like it's just heart pounding action it's a funny movie with a lot of character a lot of heart a great a fantastic soundtrack like ah couldn't get enough of it and i i've seen it like four times already i'll probably see it more times as time passes and just think think the same way possible man it's i love this movie Spider-Man fans have eaten well this year, right, Gabe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have. Feels good. Feels fucking good, man. Next up, number five, the Holdovers. Ah, oh, man, what a little, a little charming, awesome movie about three broken people, three people who have had their struggles in life, who have suffered, who have. You know, just been been beat up by life, and in a, in a, by a certain term of events, they come together to just help each other, fix each other, just do do the best they can to make the best out of their you know lonely situations. It's a wholesome experience, and I yeah, I couldn't help I couldn't help but love it. Like I said, wholesome, funny. Interesting. These characters are very well realized, and yeah, man, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get enough enough of this movie. I loved it. The holdovers is great. Great acting from everyone on screen here, and I can't wait to watch it again whenever I get the chance on Blu-ray. On Blu-ray, hopefully. Who knows when that when that'll fucking be? Next up. Number four. Oppenheimer. Oh my god, another biopic. Oh my god, what a what a trend we're having. Biopic. Oh my god. So Christopher Nolan just decided to make a, a good movie again after well, almost ten years. Jesus. Nolan, you're you're disappointing me a little bit. But yeah, no, this this uh this movie definitely brought up his stock all the way back to, to top condition. I can't I can't wait to see what this man does next. Oppenheimer is really fucking great. One of the best movies I've seen all year. That's why it's here. I'm on number four. I'm on the top ten list. Of the best movies I've seen all year. Yeah, it's right here. So, just seeing a story about a man who created the atomic, the atomic bomb and then has to deal with the weight and consequences of his, you know, of his design haunted by the possibilities of the future and the fate of the world because of what he did is like yeah man it's haunted to think about and i give the movie balls for any the way it did it's, it is a statement one that one that's probably coming you know to his fullest terms as the days go by but for now i can just be like hey this movie's really great and it's also a really, oh my god, Jesus! It's also a really good um prequel to uh, minus one, Godzilla minus one. Yeah, that 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 would be a really good uh really good follow up. What in the game? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Next up. All right. Number three. The killer, yeah. Sorry, I, I I'm sounding off because I just fucking realized that I forgot to put Godzilla minus one on the list. Mm -hmm. I hit myself. Oh, uh, like, yeah, the killer. Uh, it's a really good David Fincher movie. The killer is a very, uh, very methodical and patient movie about the details in life of the killer right here. The title character of the movie because he doesn't have a name and we learn a story about a man who is at peace with, with with his apathy and comes to realize that no he is quite similar to everybody else because of the mistakes that he makes and the sympathy and, and empathy that he 
you know. He has two people, despite what he himself believes, and it's quite interesting to watch. Like I said, this movie is very detailed. We very much see how he operates and what he does in the circumstances of the unluck and his mistakes. It's very cool. Very interesting. I love the killer. Fantastic. Next up, game. Alright. Number two. <laughs> oh my god, the Iron Claw. Another biopic. Oh, Jesus. I wonder what number one's gonna be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the Iron Claw is, uh, it's a great story about a, about one of the, uh, most well-known families in the wrestling business, the Von Eriks. That's up, Chris. <laughs> but this is also a case of another tragic story that we're, that we're, uh, you know, that I put myself through because this movie, it's hard hitting. Not even, not just in the wrestling aspect, but just in, in the uh, emotional aspect. Seeing this family, you know, start up from a you know very high position in their lives, getting you know, better into the wrestling business, wrestling with one another, being happy at their fullest, at their best, to see all of that go down the drain as they give in to addiction, depression, lack of uh, lack of uh, grieving for lost family members, and it just cost them all dearly, and it's tragic. Again, tragic. But Instead of that, it's a really great movie. I love the Iron Claw. Fantastic. Next up. Number one. Air. So, thing thing with uh, top five. May maybe the top three. And Godzilla Minus One, which I forgot to put in this list. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, just a quick review from Godzilla Minus One. It's uh, it's the best Godzilla movie I've ever seen in my life, and it's um, one of those movies I've seen all year. I'm upset that I forgot to put it in on this list. Really upset about it, but I'm a dumbass. What can I say? So the thing with this, uh, in the top three, with Godzilla on the third spot, <laughs> is that. They can be, they, they're interchangeable. I don't know which is number one, so I just had to to pick in my mind, and this this had to be the movie. It had to be this one, because it's a, it's a fascinating fucking movie. Really fascinating. Just seeing Matt Damon play his role of a guy who's really good at his job. <laughs> I, like those, I like those movies. Yeah, of a guy who's really good, who's really, really good at his job, and is trying to pick out the best way for his uh, career and and his the company he works for to benefit by picking the best basketball player to represent their shoe of course michael jordan you know you 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 owe a pair of jays you out there in real life but what what really uh makes the movie really interesting is his realization that even in his uh in his gamble his uh his risky uh you know, his risky style that could cause his company a lot. He realizes that, oh shit, this isn't, this isn't just for me. This isn't just going to cost me my job. It's going to cost everyone else. It's going to cost everyone else here. They're going to lose their jobs. They're going to, you know, go back to their families, broken, poor people who lost their jobs because of a risk that I took. And it's satisfying to see, you know, to, to see uh, his risk, the risk of the whole company just pay off into a, oh, they did it. Hell yeah, I'm happy now. Fuck yeah. And just one of those, it's just one of those old school type of ah, uh, that's so satisfying. Thank you, movie. I love movies. Okay. Uh, this this is great. I love it. We're here. We did it, folks. Nice. And yeah, Erish is just one of those movies. I loved it to death. It's great. I'm upset that it took me so long to see it. <laughs> but here we are. That's that's my top ten and Godzilla minus one list. Hmm. Well, there you have it. There you have it, folks. Now we move on into... Now, Gabe, your turn. My Preston. best of the year. Of course, we're going to start with our honorable mentions. And at number five, we have They Clone Tyrone. Uh, this is a movie that I really enjoyed, but when watching it a second time, 
it did kind of lose a little bit of its muster. And so that's part of the reason why it ended up in the honorable mentions and not in the actual list itself. And that is something we're going to see that unfortunately it plagues the rest of the honorable mentions. Like in, excuse me, the number four spot, Bottoms. Probably the funniest movie I saw in 2023. And while that should have given it a de facto spot, unfortunately its own issues um, plague it enough that it unfortunately could not make the list. Um, but it earns its spot as an honorable mention as one of the films that I would recommend the most from 2023. It was definitely a surprise uh, film for me. At number three, we have Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. A film that I absolutely adore, but I thought there were better movies in 2023. And once you get to see my, the rest of my list, you may understand why. However, it does not mean that it doesn't earn its spot in its in the honorable mentions. This was this was a tough one not to include. Just like the next two honorable mention spots, with number two being Tetris. Damn. Oh, yeah. Was this year? Yeah, it was 2023. Oh, it was yeah, it was in like April or something. Like, um, type of assault, assault, assault. Yeah, this movie this movie came out of literal nowhere and I really really liked it. It's it's very much up my alley in terms of uh biopics. But unfortunately due to its history flubbing and uh, just its own due to its history flubbing making it lead to choices that are overly cinematic uh the film unfortunately has to take a spot in honorable mentions and that leads me to my final honorable mention which actually physically pains me to not include on the list dungeons and dragons honor among thieves <laughs> this this hurts me Ugh, i wanted to put this on the list so bad but <sighs> I really wanted to, but I just couldn't. I, I, I felt there were better movies. And with that, that takes us into the best list. Here we go. Oh my god. I'm At so number fifteen. We have Saltburn. Oh my god. So, uh yeah. Saltburn is an incredibly weird and out there movie. That is not going to be for everybody, but if you are into watching a movie that's going to just take you for a spin, and you're just going to be there for the ride, then Saltburn is that movie for you. I thoroughly enjoyed Saltburn so much. Uh, thinking about it more and more, I think there's going to be more I like about it, but I, I do I can't wait to watch this a second time. Now that it's on Prime, I gotta I gotta watch it a second time. Yeah. Second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Let's take a look. Saltburn is great. Uh, and at number fourteen, we have Dream Scenario. This was a movie that I didn't expect to like as much as I did. Um, very much carried by its uh, really well realized um, premise. Uh, and Nicolas Cage putting in another fantastic performance as this lead character. Uh, you get a film that just really leaves you in a spot that's... It, it almost like rips your soul out, you know? You're just like, oh, fuck. Yeah, It, it, it takes it into the logical conclusion of the thought process of the premise. And it... It's, it's quite unfortunate, but it makes the movie really interesting for it. And that's it. And this film is a definite recommend from me. And that takes us into my number 13 spot, which I'm going to be honest. If I watch, you know what? It, from It's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. <laughs> I know this. I know this didn't make your list. No, yeah. It sure I, did make mine. I, uh, it's the thing with... 
Well, it's your list. Well, yeah, wait, wait. it's your moment. I'm not gonna interrupt you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But um, I really enjoyed Dead Reckoning Part One, and even watching it a second and even third time, I still thoroughly enjoyed Dead Reckoning. Um, I have my issues with it, and there are plenty, but for whatever reason, I just can't. I can't shake this movie from my brain. It just it just stays there. And it doesn't want to move out of the list. It plants That's itself fair. like a tree. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, I, I can't wait for the next one. Me neither. Honestly, I still I still can't. Even if, you know, yeah. Even if, game. right? Even if, I just can't. I love Mission Impossible. I love this franchise. I can't, I can't wait to see how it ends. I can't believe it's ending. <laughs> you know? I know. But yeah. Taking me into my number 12 spot, we have May December, uh, a film that was thoroughly unsettling. And. Maybe. And it really kind of delves into a lot of the, you know, the, the, the psyche of possibly <laughs> becoming a method actor and really just the. 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 Depravity, maybe not depravity, but the sinful acts an aspiring actor might go to to truly become a character. And they didn't hire Jared Leto. Yeah, thankfully they didn't. He's the, he's the king of that next thing. What are they doing? But while I, I didn't particularly enjoy May December, I have to acknowledge that it is a fantastic film, and with that, it earns its spot in my list of best of the year. That could have been on a mission, then, because I'm stupid. Yeah. No, you know, fucking stomp. It's not my list. <laughs> I was trying to follow the, uh, didn't enjoy it that much, but appreciated it enough to be like, oh. Yeah. It's but, it's worth being on the list. Got you, got you. Yeah. And that takes me into my number 11, which is Maestro. Maestro, oh my god. Uh, not even top 10. Echoing a lot of what, uh, Ernest said this is a very Hi. saddening movie, but one that I think is really bolstered by its its really complex themes um, and the way it deals with its its main relationship with Felicia and Leonard. Um, Bye, Felicia. But uh, unfortunately, its pacing, its own pacing issues, and a bit of repetitiveness do kind of hold it down for me however it is a fantastic film that I mean, deserves to be here and that takes me into number 10 and similar to what i've just said about pacing and length let's talk about killers of the flower moon oh my god martin scorsese's three and a half hour epic uh that is unsettling because it's real it's true what? history is it is it Scorsese or is it Scorsese? I don't know. I say Scorsese. I see. I see. But um, yeah, no, it's 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 a Scorsese movie. What do you want me to say? It's pretty fantastic. Uh, of course. Hey, look at that. It's Robert De Niro and uh, Leonard Leo. Leonard Leonardo DiCaprio, and a Scorsese movie. They're probably great. It's also probably. probably got some really intricate uh, themings of crime. Yeah, it sure does, and it's a fantastic movie. It's intense the entire way through. Uh, it's and it's like a, and I've already said it before, but it's it's a very just unsettling and disturbing movie to watch because you are watching this all with the pretense that this is true history, like this actually happened and it's something you can't shake even after the movie's done but yeah no incredible film and with that similar thought in mind the number nine film is oppenheimer a film that does oh truly God. leave you unsettled and leave you thinking about you know how do you not think about the implications of what j robert oppenheimer created and put into the world and part of that is why the film is so fantastic but another aspect of that is just for once nolan's uh 
what's the non-linear storytelling actually benefits the movie hmm. and it creates something that's so intense for its entire three hour runtime, and so in never once is boring which is something i unfortunately couldn't say about killers of the flower moon where in its last half hour it got a bit boring oppenheimer doesn't have that man great ah thank you nolan good movie thank you yeah you made a good movie again thank god and that takes you to number eight which is asteroid city ah uh, I love me some quirky Wes Anderson, and Asteroid City is right up my alley. He is the quirkiest of the bunch. Yep. Uh, I love his quirky characters, I love his dialogue, and I was just really entertained with this movie throughout its entire t- runtime. I just couldn't get enough of it, and when it was over I was like, oh, it's done? I could have watched another half hour easily of Asteroid City. Even with its play within a play within a play kind of thing going on. Which, which made it worse. Yeah. It needs to be that because it's been what it was. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Asteroid City. Fantastic film. Really, really enjoyed it. Takes me into number seven, which is Air. Yeah. Air is air is fantastic it's funny it's really entertaining it goes by really fast for a movie that's i believe two hours something or close to that yeah i think it's over two hours yeah but it is effortlessly entertaining its entire time um and tells just a film that's essentially just competence porn it's just people (laughs) being really good at their job That's Air. That's my favorite. At number six, we have The Holdovers. My God. Uh, the Holdovers is just, again, a really solid, you know, dramedy with uh, each one of its characters being thoroughly explored and realized, and it's, it just kind of takes a hold of you for its, its, for its time, and I was just really thoroughly you know, entertained by it, and I thought it was a fantastic film with fan- great performances and really solid writing. You know, what, what else is there to say? At, what else is there to say? All right, and at number five, I have The Iron Claw. Um, 2023 had a had a habit of making movies that consistently ripped your heart out and shoved it back in you, and it said said all right deal with this now and the iron claw was one of those movies i i am become depression when the movie ended it was i'm depression destroyer of hearts yeah it is a soul-crushing movie but a story that was just really i don't want to i hesitate to use the word entertaining but it was just really engrossing for its long length it's like it's over two hours and well i I can't say i did feel it it is a film that is necessitating those two hours i don't know what you would cut in fact i would only add to this movie um but yeah no the iron claw is fantastic give zach efron his nomination please please that takes me into number four which is Godzilla minus one. Man, only number four? Yep. It made Whoa. top five. And I, I, <laughs> I adore Godzilla minus one. I walked out of that film and went, yep, that's top five. <laughs> Godzilla's that's, back, baby. I was like, that's top five for sure. Uh, Godzilla has never been so back. Uh, even though Godzilla's had a pretty big, you know, comeback in the past ten years, uh, this film is just like the the next level of that comeback. It is the best Godzilla film I've seen, bar none. And it was it 
it takes you on an emotional journey throughout its entire time and it never skimps out even on like the godzilla destruction and terror even with that uh with that with that creation and then all the while telling a really human story that actually I, that is actually something that the audience can connect to as opposed to any other Godzilla film where the humans almost feel like tertiary but yeah uh, Godzilla minus one incredible film see it when you can it is so good and Ooh, excuse me at my number three we have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse yeah, I love me some Spider-Man. Um, Across the Spider-Verse is a film that just... It, it blew my mind that a movie like this can exist. And it just made me so fucking happy that, that you know, these storytellers were taking these risks and expanding the medium of animation and making it feel like much more... Like, this was a big event movie that everyone had to go see, and it it excelled at every corner. It's an incredible film. If you still don't... If you still think that animation is just for kids, then you, you're lost. You're just lost. Because animation can tell some of the most adult and mature stories that you can ever find and watch. And Across the Spider-Verse is another addition to that incredible legacy of animation and once again forces the medium to step up i mean if you still think that about that animated movies are just for kids then you're like 20 or 30 years behind yeah catch up old man catch up the future is now old man it really is animation has been kicking ass for over 50 60 years get with the times right oscars yeah right oscars fuck you but yeah, Cross Spider Verse. I adore it so much. I've seen it like four times. It is so good. Can't wait to watch it again, and again, and again. That's what I said. And again. But yeah, and that takes me into my number two spot, and that is a thousand and one. While my good buddy over here does not quite agree with my placement of this. Um, I really, really liked 1001. It told an aggressively human story um, that I was pretty much enthralled with the entire time and featuring some of the most raw and hearts, like soul ripping dialogue um, to be featured in 2023. All spearheaded by an incredible Tiana Taylor. This is unfortunately a film that is gonna get lost in the shuffle and i feel like it's deserving of its roses and hence why it's so high up on this list nobody heard of it yeah i did <laughs> you know, but, you know what that counts for, counts for something i guess but yeah i just want, I just want to purchase it and that leads me to my number <laughs> one movie of 2023 and that is past lives similar to a thousand thousand and one this film tells a very uh, un not unnerving but very human story that's very real very real and raw and where i think past life excels over a thousand and one is that the story is more succinct and there are so many as aspects of it that are just so well fleshed out and it's just a film that if like when you think about it for a while you're just like holy shit like what that meant and there's a final sequence in this film where a character just walks down the street and it's this long tracking shot and without saying much it it is like you just want to like curl into a ball uh this film destroyed me when i saw it because it just it makes you think about the days gone by 
and like the may video maybe game? no no and okay. That's you not know, that good. The missed the missed opportunities in life and makes you think about if whether or not thing how things would have gone when if different things happened. What could have been? What could have been? And oh yeah, that's always a scary fucking thought, Jesus. Yeah. What could have been is always a scary thought, and this film is the personification of what could have been. Ooh. And it's it's the like it's the personification and visualization of the log of that thought process which is entirely illogical and this film is just ugh. the more i think about it the more i just love it so much uh, it when i finished it i was like yeah nope that's that's number one and i don't think anything's gonna beat it this was ugh. this was so fucking good um incredible film made it to the top of my list and yeah with that that makes the end of both of our lists ba -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. we did it but yeah with that 2023 is now a closed book we can now move on to 2024 here's hoping that i can find good movies this year oh yeah what is coming out this year jesus there's stuff bong joon has got a new movie coming out huh Bong Joon Ho's got a new movie coming out. Oh yeah, so there's, there's at least that. Just that 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 should be best movie of the year, you know. We'll see. But yeah, a lot of delays though. A lot of delays, Jesus. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that is our list. We thank you so much for sitting through this one. Uh, we thank got you, it. We you. got it done a little shorter this time than the last video. Yes. But uh, in fairness, this one was a long time coming yeah but yeah thank you so much for watching and uh have a good day oh thank you or so night much. yeah good night that's for us that's us <laughs> we're, we're, we're good nighting you guys bye bye good morning for those who just woke up sorry video <laughs> <laughs> uh, bye 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 bye, bye, -bye.